Don't let me down Zack Snyder let me down You broke my heart Zack Snyder You broke, you took my heart and you broke it <laughs> Alright, we're gonna talk a little bit about Rebel Moon, and I'm just going to rant about it. I'm going to give you a, just what some of my thoughts are, because if you're familiar with the channel at all, you will know that I am somewhat of a, I'm not a Zack Snyder bro, but I am a Zack Snyder apologist. I will apologize. I will make excuses. I will say that Zack Snyder knows how to do some things, <laughs> but I think Rebel Moon has now proven that I am wrong and I shall apologize because holy cow, what a train wreck Rebel Moon is. And that makes it two for two, my friend. And you cannot keep striking out. So we're going to talk a little bit about Zack Snyder. We're going to talk a little, a little bit about Rebel Moon. But in the meantime, I am the man you may know as Z from Our Reviews Will Kill You. And if you could like and subscribe this video, we do reviews, rants, all that good stuff and more. And we have an awesome podcast for you to check out. I will drop the link at the end. But let's just get right into this. As Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon docked a mockbuster. Now, I don't care what the critics say because the critics are completely irrelevant to me as they have no idea what they are talking about. So we're not going to worry too much about the critics because obviously Zack Snyder seems to have a cult following. But I don't think that his staunchest staunchest followers can even come anywhere close to defending rebel moon so i just i don't understand what this is it has a rotten tomato score and the critics that are at 23 percent they've always hated uh zack snyder but the audience score has it 69 percent and i guess i'm gonna read <laughs> i'm gonna read the uh i'm not gonna read this Basically, it's Star Wars mixed with Seven Samurai, mixed with a bunch of other things that he stole. And it's not even that he's paying homage to anything. So essentially, there's a woman who's on a agrarian planet. Uh, this planet is full of Mennonites or you know, people who are opposed to technology. You may know them as the Amish. And uh, they till the land and tell the evil space nazis come and we're not talking about like an allegory for space nazis we are just straight up we're just taking the outfits the uniform those freshly pressed uniforms that those tight high high tight fades yes all that more so they decide to piss off these guys and there's something some sort of lore building about a unbroken line of Kings, and no one cares. Just all expedition dumpage. They have Anthony Hopkins reading. <laughs> never Man never delivers a bad line. He's delivering this with all the seriousness and gravitas that Anthony Hopkins can deliver, and I have no... There's no apologies for this. There's not even, like, one or two cool scenes that I can go back. So, anyway, there's this strong whammon, and she don't want to fight no more, but now she's got to fight, and she's got to put together team the a team yet you know more about the a team than you know about this team uh and I, <laughs> there's first of all she goes around the galaxy collecting these people for this 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 task where she's going to defend them they're going to defend themselves against the space nazis who have a giant battleship and she's like i'm going to put together a crew not not a ship that's Kate, not an army, a crew of people who are going to defend her ridiculous little outpost that she is now a part of. Of these people who, uh, there's Mo Modoc is in it, and Modoc wants to get freaky. And then, yeah, it, <laughs> this movie is so bad. So let's talk about who does she get? She gets the the Amish dude. I mean, he's a real winner. Total classic character. Always love to bring an Amish around. And then she also... <laughs> okay, I just want to point this out before I move too far. There's the Amish guy. She brings the Amish guy with her. There's a skirmish. 
between a garrison of troops that's left behind because ultimately they have to bring back the grain. You know, this giant space army needs the grain from this Amish group, right? So they're going to come collect their grain in like nine weeks or ten weeks. So they leave behind a garrison. Amongst the garrison is a, a former death honor guard robot who now just moves boxes. And another dude who doesn't like to see girls getting graped. So when he goes, they stop the grapeage, right? And the robot runs off to do nothing for the rest of the movie. You will not see him in the rest of this movie. And there's a soldier who works for the Imperium who you will not see ever again after that scene because he doesn't have any interest. Even Finn, Finn from freaking Star Wars had more things to do than this guy who helps stop a grape and then goes and disappears. You'd think he'd know their tactics. He might have codes. He might have literally anything. Yet, no, we will not see this man ever again. So we take the Amish man. We go to a spaceport. We go to Tatooine, where we go meet some freaky deaky aliens, but not too many freaky deaky aliens, and recreate the Tatooine battle-ish, whatever, with Obi-Wan and, Star and Luke and whatever. And they pick up a Han Solo type character. So now you have Han Solo, but less fun. And you have an Amish guy. Then you pick up, and I might be going out of order here, Ninja Lady. Maybe, maybe, before, yeah, let's just, we'll go with Ninja Lady. Ninja Lady, a robot Ninja Lady, who sounds like she has a cool backstory, fights Giant Spider Lady. And at some point, she's holding a small child hostage. There are literally five people standing there with guns ready to shoot the spider lady at any given time or who have guns but they're like nah we're gonna watch what the ninja lady does because she's cool and let's just let her die instead of just you know when the spider lady drops her hostage open fire on said spider then we also then we collect the prince that no one i didn't know i don't know any of these people's names <laughs> and i tried to watch it twice and i couldn't make it through so uh, then you have the prince who breaks a hippogriff, which you will never see the hippogriff ever again in this story. There is no purpose to this hippogriff other than this one scene. And I charge Zack Snyder with the crime of slow motion with slow motion in it. You cannot get away. If you're Zack Snyder, you're, you can use slow motion. You cannot get away with slow motion and then even slower motion. It's just not possible. Like, you can't do that. So he breaks this dumb hippogriff, which we will never see again. And this guy, I don't know if he has these skills. Then we go to pick up the general, who's supposed to be this super wise, crazy, nose general. No, he's drunk. He, they hose him off, and he decides to go. Why any of these people decide to go with this lady, I don't know. Does she have naked pictures of them? I don't know. She just says, let's go, and they're like, oh, all right, let's go. You would, they went to a, <laughs> they went to a, gladiat like a, a gladiatorial arena, a coliseum, if you will. You would have thought you might see the general use some tactics to defeat his enemies. No, he just agrees to go and they're off they go. Then they meet Party Time Antifa. And Party Time Antifa lets one of them go. And why do they agree to go? Because because the plot says so. And then, and I'm just going to spoil this. And I'm not going to spoil the rest of it. But just I have to spoil this one po uh, component. You put the team together. You have this team of Crazy Ninja Lady... Crazy Prince, super good looking with connections and flexing and stuff. You got the Amish dude, special skills of planting. You got the general, special skills of planting. You've got an Antifa member. Yet, do any of them use their special skills? No, they immediately get captured. This movie is so, 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 so bad. I cannot explain to you how aggravating this was. There is a comic book. There is, and I just want you to think about this. If you had the chance, if you watched Rebel Moon and you were like, could you, would you want to join Rebel? Could you write an original story that you would be interested in? I'm sure everyone would be like, Star Wars? Hell yeah, I'd come up with a brand new Jedi and do this, that, or the other thing, and a brand new villain, whatever. You'd make something. Harry Potter, you'd make some more Potters. 
Lord of the Rings. You get more rings. What am I getting in Rebel Moon? Absolutely nothing. Like, why would I go back to the Re Rebel Moon? Plus, everybody's been saying it wrong. They're all saying it's it's not Rebel Moon. It's Rebel Moon. Part one. A Child of Fire. You have to say that specific exactly that way. It is Rebel Moon. It's not a noun. It's a verb. Just think, just think of that. Uh, I also want to talk about, this is the second time that Zack Snyder is the director of, he's the cinematographer and director of photography. So um, he fails at this again because he did it. Now, there aren't as many in this one, but this dude cannot be allowed to handle anything other than an adaptation. He cannot come up with his original stuff. He's not, he, he you get millions of dollars to come up with anything you want and this is what you do with it i just and i i'm, I'm gonna get to the part where i like Zack snyder and i'm gonna defend some things but this is indefensible and then you think back his last two movies have been duds army of the dead had dead pixels in it because he decided he wanted to use a goofy camera and he doesn't know enough about lenses to know that there are dead pixels and let leave them in People were freaking out about this. Like people from cinematography school were like, look at the dead pixel. Why are you using this camera? Why is everything out of focus? What are you doing? Like this is amateur hour stuff. So then he films this where everything looks like bleh. Oh, I just stop being everything, Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder needs to be reeled in. If ever given a chance, I, this might destroy his career. I mean, it's that bad. It really is. And I can't believe I'm ranting this long, but uh, let's briefly walk through it. Zack Snyder's Justice League. This is from IMDb. Raised 7.9. I truly enjoy Zack Snyder's Justice League. I think um, Warner Brothers did him dirty. And I know people don't like the dark DCU, but it was different. It gave us something different. I liked seeing it. It wasn't jokes every five seconds like the MCU. And look what happened to the MCU. Watchmen, one of my all-time favorite comic book adaptations. Literally looks like frames pulled off of a screen. It's kind of amazing if you give it a chance. Now, I don't recommend the ultra-long version because that is the pacing is absolutely dreadful and has an entire comic book that's like an hour long shoved in it. An animated comic book. And I just I can't recommend that. But... I do love me with some Watchmen. 300, absolutely beautiful, like, iconic. You think of iconic lines and iconic cultural stamp. Zack Snyder put his cultural stamp on the world with 300. I am Sparta. Like, what is, or this is Sparta. Come on. Come on, man. Dawn of the Dead revolutionized uh revolutionized the uh, zombie movie and i know james gunn helped write it and that's the point get better writers get better get a good cinematographer and the man knows how to capture some interesting things he just can't be in charge of anything else man of steel i really really like it's man of steel has grown on me over the years man of steel still has some pretty amazing iconography and i really they even use it today to help children understand their emotions when they are overwhelmed by things. I, I It's cool. Legends of the Guardians, the Owls of Gahul. Uh, yeah, not so great. I, I could skip that one. I love Dawn of Justice, Batman versus Superman. I know people hate the Martha thing. Good Lord. They've been named that for 100 years together. Like, they've always had the same mom's name. Did you not know that? It's okay. It's okay. Does Batman kill people? Yeah. Michael Keaton kills people. I just watched Batman 89 and he kills people. Get over it. It's a thing. I really, I, the opening of, um, of that movie, I just, to, to show the Batman sequence in, in that perspective. And that just floored me watching the opening of that with, with Bruce Wayne. And don't get me wrong. There are, it's a flawed movie, but the, the, uh, the uncut version is much better and is actually quite good. And I think if you just look at it as different adaptation with better casting, you'll be fun. You'll, you'll like it. The Joss Dust Week does not count. That's not a real movie. Sucker Punch is barely a real movie. Army of Dead. Now we're getting down to it. 5.8. Not great. I don't remember anything that happened in it except that it was really ugly and not that interesting. 
And then Rebel Moon, part one, A Child of Fire, 5.7, his worst rated movie yet. The, le- the oh my God, the, the, just a bad movie. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think because maybe I have lost my mind. I don't think I have, but I promise you, I was a Zack Snyder apologist and I can no longer come up with excuses. I have no more excuses. When he's left on his own to run wild, he is an absolute disaster and train wreck. I apologize. I tried to defend the movies that I like, and you don't have to like them. It's okay, and I can be wrong. I will admit to it. I apologize. Please destroy me in the comments below. I look forward to reading them. As far as myself, I will be caught on the podcast aforementioned one Live stream at Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come join us. Come Rebel Moon, part one, Child of Fire. And the next one is called The Scar Giver. Come on, man. You couldn't name things better. Can you hire someone to name things better? George Lucas was not a man amongst himself. He was a man amongst an island of masters and geniuses and other people that helped him get better. He didn't put it all on himself. Not even Christopher Nolan does everything. Like, come on, people. Somebody's got to slap some sense in this dude. I just, I don't understand. I can no longer defend him. But let me know what you think below. Love all y'all, but I'm on to the next one.